What is up everybody? I'm no Lex Given, back with some more Hearthstone Battlegrounds. And today's video is going to be a little bit different for a few reasons. First of all, this is post-commentary, something that a lot of you are pretty familiar with from my storybook brawl content. Though I think most of my Hearthstone Battlegrounds content, especially as I'm learning the game, is going to be live commentary. But I played this game really late at night and I played this game right before the new season started. So this is still gameplay footage from the previous season. If you're only interested in new season stuff, then just wait for my next video. I got some sweet content coming out on the new season as well. But I wanted to show this game off specifically because it can't happen again. We're gonna be making really great use of a card that is no longer in the game. And uh, shout outs to Rashi as well from Storybook Brawl. They told me uh, when we were discussing various things from different auto battlers that Hogger from Hearthstone Battlegrounds was going to be going away. And there's a few, I, why that came up, it was in regards to just APM or actions per minute related comps in Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Um, Hatball is an awkward thing in Storybook Brawl because it takes a, what is very much like a strategy game and sure you've got a limited amount of time to make your strategic decisions, but it turns it into a game where your stats are limited by how quickly you can move around the mouse. And there's a lot of things like that in Hearthstone Battlegrounds to the point where I often find myself ending my turns with excess gold. And I'm sure as I get more comfortable with the game, those things will go away. But this comp, Hogger Pirates, is certainly one of the most APM intensive uh, comps that you can put together. And I was able to do it on Millhouse, which is probably a pretty good hero to do it on because Millhouse makes it so that all of your characters only cost two. So you don't need it as many hoggers to start generating gold. And then uh, you're really only limited by how quickly you can churn through everything in the shop. So. This game's very weird because of all of those factors, but I did still think it would be fun to look at. We're not gonna look at the whole thing though. This was a 50 minute game, as you can see down at the bottom of the screen, 48 minute game. Uh, it went on very, very long. Oh, I guess I'm covering it up with my camera. Let's, let's move that just for a second. Whoops, that's not my camera. That's my camera, there you go, 40, six minutes plus three more minutes over here. So almost a 50 minute game. It was very, very long. I'm not gonna cover all points of it. I don't even know which points exactly are the best to cover. And I'm not entirely sure, you know, what parts of the game are played optimally, what parts are played suboptimally. I also don't know if this was an easier lobby for me because I queued up with one of my friends, which is partially why I don't have the in-game audio, because uh, we were talking during the game. Uh, but I don't know if that made the lobby softer. I was showing her the game for the first time, and so her rating was zero, and that might have brought down the collective MMR. But regardless, uh, Millhouse, probably a pretty strong hero. There's my friend down there at the bottom. And I was kind of like, uh, literally had never played this before uh, and was just looking for a replacement after Storybook Brawl is now gone. So I believe what I might have done here is just picked up three characters just to try to make my buddy as cheap as possible. That's what I was doing on the previous patch to reasonable success. And I think it's probably what I'll go for here. Pick up the two elementals and then probably pick up the other dog. And uh, yeah, you wanna play Molten Rock first and then play Party Elemental. I don't know if either of these characters are in the new version of the game, um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know how much any of this stuff even matters. I think I will jump ahead a little bit. Maybe let's try to find where I... Okay, well, let's let's jump ahead to where we get the buddy. That seems pretty good. I probably, yeah, just spend a turn leveling up. That seems right. 
And then, okay, these guys are good. This is where I started to think like, oh, maybe pirates are pretty good and, and uh, missed some sequencing there. Um, but the gambler can be purchased for two and then sold for three. So already we are making some money. And here I'm going to grab my buddy and then I can either buy something or I can throw in a roll. I'm gonna uh, sell out of one of my pirates and then looks like that would allow me to sell off one more thing and then I could buy two more things just to try to be a little bit stronger. So uh, we'll probably just buy the mug and then buy one of these two quill bores, though they're not like incredibly exciting. One of these three quill bores at this point, um, I'll just keep it in my hand for econ. Um, oh, okay, I guess I could do this too. It's it's all about the same. Uh, doesn't really matter. Green thumb, I guess I could throw that in. It's pretty good with both of the divine shield things. So what would I sell off? I can sell off this three three or the four two. Yeah, I'm gonna pick this up um, and then try to rearrange some things so that way I can give these uh, extra stats to my Divine Shield character. So that seems good. Just do a little bit of rearranging there. And I probably want something on the other side of the pups too, which I think I realized like at the last second, but it's just too hard to, to figure it all out. But anyways, we're reasonably strong here at this point in the game. Yeah, I don't, don't have time to make my board exactly perfect, uh, but I think that this is still quite strong and will get me to the point where I can just like now start econing for the levels and start purchasing some more pirates soon enough. But there we go, we get double the use out of those stats with the Divine Shield characters. Let's start jumping ahead a little bit and seeing if we can find some cool stuff. Uh, we're buying some things, buying some pirates. I don't know how much any of this matters. We could take the dog here to triple it. Um, oh, I did, but I hang on to the discovery. I don't know what that's called. Uh, triple reward. Okay, we hang on to the triple reward. We'll deal with that next turn. Warden Fellwater is pretty cool. I was wondering how they got my millhouse buddy. Um, but we're going to take a little bit of damages here, drop below 30 for the first time. This opponent was uh, submarining a little bit, uh, but so were we kind of. And now we're hanging on to some pirates. And this is where I start to think like, okay, maybe pirates could be good. We could just sell through some pirates and then make a big strong arm. And that could be good. Um, yeah, that could be like a reasonable strategy to look for. We can also find um, the, the specific things that we're looking for a little bit easier because of our um, buddy. So that seems cool as well um, to just cycle through all of these things and find some more fun stuff. Yeah, I, I, I don't quite have the mastery of this game, right? It, uh, comparatively to Storybook Brawl where I can talk about everything with extreme confidence, which is why I think we're mostly going to stick to live commentary for a lot of these. Uh, and also just I like playing a game in the morning to wake up. Uh, and I am going to play some Battlegrounds without live commentary, just either on my phone or late at night when I'm not really feeling as up to record live commentary on it. Uh, and when I do that, I'll probably just like recap some things at the start of my next video. Uh, but for the most part, I think you're gonna get live commentary until I do feel like I am the master of this domain. Uh, but I also, I've got some busy weeks coming up. Um, just this week is a little bit busy. There's first off Hearthstone Battlegrounds and Iron Lad, which is a new card for Marvel Snap that I've been super excited about. So content wise, I'm busy. Um, health wise, I'm busy with some doctor's appointments. And then Lily was sick yesterday when I woke up. She was throwing up and not feeling well. So I took her to the vet. She had, I think it's called Guardia or Giardia, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, I forget, but she was just not feeling well. So then I was kind of out of it for the rest of the day because she woke me up at like six in the morning so that I could take her outside to throw up. And um, yeah, 
Uh, so that was not necessarily ideal. Oh, here is where we really start to move into some nice pirate stuff. We find Gold Grubber, and then we find two Strong Arms. All of that seems really, really good. We get to triple the Strong Arm. Um, I should make... I'll wonder if I'll do it here. I think that I... Okay, I miss it. What you should do there is you should make room for the Strong Arm first, play the second one, then buy the third one, make the triple, and um, yeah, do that. But regardless, we will be able to add another gold character to the board, so the gold grubber is fun, and then um, do some other fun stuff with the pirates of it all. I'm gonna try to find some more pirates before the end of the turn. We find another strong arm, so I will sell out of some of my um, gamblers here to have the cash for that and uh, just do a few more piratey things. Uh, could sell this and then roll one more time, pick up one more pirate. Looks like that is what I'll do, but I miss. I don't find another pirate here, but still uh, we get to add some nice stats to the board with all of the pirates this turn. Next week I'm also a little bit busy. Uh, that's what I was going to bring up is that we've got, uh, yeah, I just have some other things going on next week as well. Um, find another pirate here, Vanessa Van Cleef. Um, so I want to get into streaming this and streaming some Marvel Snap as well. I don't know exactly when that's going to start though. So maybe the week after next week. Oh, sorry, my camera is frozen. It's been giving me problems all day, unfortunately. I'll try to load it up here, but we might just not have a camera for the rest of this video. Unfortunate. Uh, it might take a second too to like just restart or something. But we can watch this part because we are doing we're doing some funky pirate stuff. Um, again, my plays are not ideal, but that's not what you're paying for. The camera went on and off again just as quick. I think it's also really hot right now. And that might be another problem just with my camera over the summer is that it's just way too likely to overheat. But for right now, I did get it back online. So we'll rock with it for a second. But Van Cleef is really good. Gold Grubber is really good. Again, I don't know which of these cards still remain in the game. But for this game, uh, we did play with them. But yes, I might look to do some live streams. I think I will do some simulcasted streams with both YouTube and Twitch, though at some point I do want to move into just streaming on Twitch so that way I can listen to music while I play and you guys can add songs to the queue. It just makes it overall a more fun experience. So I do want to look to do that at some point. Um, one other thing that is definitely not on the agenda soon, but You'll see it. You'll see it come eventually. Maybe I'll make a Reddit post or something. Uh, I do imagine some people are going to unsubscribe in the meantime. I will I will make more Storybook Brawl content in the future. How am I going to do that? Well, I've got a lot of games saved up that I just never uploaded to YouTube. And part of the reason for that, let's jump into the next combat so you guys have something fun to look at on the stream. Part of the reason for that is I just had a, a big backlog, um, partially because I'm going on a trip next week. I, I wanted to have a backlog for that, though ironically, I'm not going to wind up using it for that. Um, and then I also have like a few games that I played just in the very final days before Storybook Brawl went away that I never took the time to record post commentary over because the game was gone. So I'm not going to rush out that content. It feels evergreen at this point. I'm not, I don't want to sit on it forever because at some point nobody will care about it anymore. But I'm thinking about doing something like top 10 or top 20 games that you haven't seen yet. I might also do top 20 games that you have seen or a retrospective of some sort. That is definitely something that I'm also thinking of. Um, and just something that I think will be cool to celebrate Storybook Brawl with in the future. And even if I do like a top 10, that could be two weeks worth of content if I put out a video every day. 
but do I wanna blow through it that quickly? So I still have a lot of questions about exactly how I want to handle all of that. This was sweet, by the way. I lost the combat and then was able to just have so much extra gold this turn because of that. Uh, triple this up. This gives me a tier five character off the Discover. I'm not sure if I'll go for it right this second. And um, yeah, definitely didn't play it all exactly ideal. Should have played the pirate that says when things get added to your hand. Should have played that first. Looks like I will play this guy now. Discover a tier five. Another blue shell is kind of insane. Um, I think I wind up running out of time this turn though. Uh, no, okay, looks like I do sell the blue shell, but there's no way I get through all 12 of this gold here, right? Oh, I level up. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. And then, looks like I'll just buy a pirate, buy another pirate. Um, can just sell through the first mate? That's not terrible. If I just sell out of this and then buy the second South Sea Captain, and then I find another South Sea Captain. Okay, okay. I thought there was something funky that was going to happen like that. I just run through South Sea Captains at the end of the turn, and that will get me a level 6 character, which I believe gets me my first Hogger. I believe I get Hogger um, relatively quickly. I'm already kind of in Pirates, and I wasn't necessarily forcing it, but uh, it certainly all worked out well. Um, but yeah, as far as storybook brawl content, let's say I do a top 20 videos. That could be two weeks worth of content, but I think I'd roll it out slower than that. So I'm not sure exactly what that's going to look like. I do think that's not going to be something that I care about at all until the Gambit game has wrapped up. And I know Gambit game is a little bit on hiatus right now as the editor kind of figures out what they're doing with that and I don't really blame them. Um, maybe it's something I'll talk about in the future, but basically one guy is editing the whole thing. Um, so trying to cut them a little bit of slack and um, yeah, super grateful for all of the work that they have done up until this point. So at this point, we will pick up the South Sea Captain. Like I said, I believe that this gets me my first hogger off of this triple reward. Let's find out. And no, it doesn't. Okay, so we're not finding hogger just yet. Do I level here then to quickly grab the hogger? I'm not sure. I probably just grab Uther because I can make something a 15-15, though everything's basically bigger than that already too. I can keep the captain around at this point just because it's... Um, leveling up the uh what's it called grub grub guy um but i'm just going to look for fives purchase fives so that more fives show up thanks to my buddy and this is like a pretty efficient way to roll through things i'm also somewhat interested in finding more gold grubbers but i really want to find more of my first card there vanessa i think it was called uh this thing seems cool and it's basically free oh hogger's a five. Oh, okay so this is how I find Hogger. It's funny. Uh, that would be something that I would, an ex a mistake I would expect me to make before this game, uh, but making that now is pretty silly. So I want to cycle through fives to find Hoggers, and you can see just how possible that is with Millhouse's buddy. Get to pick somebody else's buddy. Um, this Kodo is actually kind of reasonable, and then I'll just finish off this turn by buying one more five and seeing if I can get one more hogger in the shop. But when I don't, I'm not gonna worry about it. I am just going to play this cyborg Drake and let the shop roll out. And then next turn, the main use of the Kodo is actually to like shrink the shop. So that way uh, I can pick up the, uh, or I'll just have more possibility of rolling through fives to try to find Hogger uh, through the shop. So that is the plan here up against my friend who uh, now has realized you want to put these bombs towards the end of your comp so that you can um, make a bunch of stuff. And Kangor also seems really good with that though. I don't know, maybe there like is an interaction that we didn't under, I, I thought Kangor was gonna be good with that. Turns out Kangor just doesn't work with that at all. So I don't know why that is. Maybe somebody can fill me in, assuming these are still cards that are relevant to Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Unfortunately, 
I take my friend out there. Um, wasn't intentional, just kind of happened, but uh, what can you do? So now we are in the top four and we have a hogger. This is where things really get started. And uh, we even get a gambler to start this turn off. That is going to put me to 10 gold just by itself. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll play the Kodo just so that way we've got some more things that we can buy through. I will buy the, I think I actually make a mistake here. Yeah, I buy the captain. Should have just bought the buddy thing first. So that way two fives could show up into my shop. But instead, my shop's a little bit full. That's something you got to pay attention to on Millhouse. While you are playing Hogger Comps with the buddy, n none of these things are possible anymore. So really doesn't matter. Um, looks like we're able to refresh the shops again. Uh, and then like somewhat tempted to grab a six to see another six, but I'm just gonna grab another gold grubber here. I would like to triple the gold grubber at some point. Uh, you can see we still have so much gold. Uh, still had 11 gold for the turn. Selimental is free. Um, but it's actually bad. It's just like a waste of time because you just fill up the shop with one. So not going to worry about that. I will pick up a gold grubber. I like to see that. There's also a deckhand. I'll want to add that to the board as well. And here's where the turns start to really, really feel like half ball turns, as you can tell. We are churning through it all here. We still have basically the max gold that we started with for the turn. We still have seven gold. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Now at this point, I realize I really just want to find more hoggers. I want to buy level five things so that I can find more hoggers though. I'm also potentially interested in some other fours that pirates can bring me. And will I have the time to play this strong arm while I have played so many other things? Looks like I will. I'm going to give taunt to the gold grubber. And then I will give, oh, I'm gonna give it to something else here actually. And then I will play the strong arm on potentially Hogger. Yeah, just because Hogger is the character that I know I'm gonna keep around the longest at this point. Let's try to give that as much stats as possible. I would like to find more Vanessa's as well. Was there any other business that I wanted to talk about in this video? I don't think so. I don't think so. Having fun playing Marvel Snap, having some fun playing Battlegrounds, at least for now, I do think that the game is less complex than Storybook Brawl. Oof, it's, that's sad when I'm like forgetting the name of Storybook Brawl, uh, just because so much else is going on here. But I do think it's less complex, but I should at least see the complexity to the end. I do think it's a pretty well-designed game, and it's an auto-battler, which is my favorite genre, so... I'm gonna mess around with it. I'm gonna see how high I can climb on the ladder. No spoilers, I've already recorded videos for the next two days. Uh, so I'll hopefully have daily Battlegrounds content into the weekend and hopefully can get enough of a backlog to cover for my trip. Marvel Snap content is gonna be harder to cover for. It also takes longer to create, but I do think I can probably create a backlog for that as well. I've got a lot of really sweet games and I can just make a bunch of like shorter form content in the meantime. So um, there we go. Let's pick a buddy. None of these are particularly exciting. It's just a cycle. It costs two. It, they both sell for one. So it's like free and you get to see more tier five characters. So from that capacity, it's pretty good. And then I get to triple Vanessa this turn. That's going to let me find another tier six character as well as one more level five character in the shop. Don't think I'm going to worry about any of these. I might pick up Leroy, but honestly, I will probably miss it. Oh, that's right. I find an Eliza this turn. So we'll throw Eliza onto the board. I'll grab this because why not? Maybe I'll find another better five, but just going to wind up selling through it. I can cycle through one more five here this turn or just refresh my shop. I see another gold grubber and my initial thought, my first thought here is to lock for it. I do wind up unlocking before the end of the turn though. And just to check in, oh, I'm seeing that the camera died now. All right, let's take that off the screen because what I actually wanted to show you was how much time is still left in this game. Despite being in the top four, we've still got a long one and a bunch of really long turns. I'm not sure if I got longer turns because I was playing with a friend who was playing for the first time. So maybe she got some long turns and then I was able to make use of them because it was like a new player friendly lobby. But either way, uh, we've got a lot of time here to play. And 
We still only have one hogger, which is not how many I wind up with. If you remember the first screenshot at the start, or the uh, the thumbnail, the thumbnail for this video. This is, sure, I'll just say it. I'll spoil it here a little bit. This is going to be our finals opponent. They have a really, really nice mech comp set up and um, a pretty big, I forget what this guy is called right here, but this is like the main combo. This guy gets Divine Shield whenever you summon a mech, and this gets Divine Shield whenever something else loses Divine Shield. So they're a nice little combo. You just have a bunch of Divine Shields, give these a bunch of stats, and then makes it really, really tough to battle through. And my opponent's going to put up a nice little fight here. Looks like we will tie. So not the worst thing in the world. Oh, that's right. No, I don't tie. I don't tie. They, um summon some more things because of uh that's a magnetic ability that meant that things are summoning things when they die so not quite a tie we take a little bit of damage down to 13 but we still have some health i'm going to sell out of some of my stuff so that i can uh blaze through them through some things i want to find some pirates i actually like buying the gamblers because they can find you more gamblers and we are still, we've purchased three things this turn and rolled once, and we still have plus three gold from where we started, which is pretty incredible. Uh, we do spend a lot of gold on these rolls though, so that part is not great, but we're still making great progress through the shops here, and we have some nice big stuff. A gambler will restock our gold a little bit, though we're not really going to find too much else. I'm basically just rolling and hoping to find some hoggers this turn, and by the looks of it, we are not going to find any. So I think I will buy something just to be a little bit better than like a roll, which isn't super useful. And then um, I guess we could sell out of this handless and buy something else. It, it doesn't, none of it really matters. So uh, I will wind up doing that just to get a blood gem, which I think I put on Vanessa. Let's jump ahead a little bit here. I guess we can take a look at this Elementals opponent, see what they got going on at the start of this fight. Doesn't look like they have any real way to battle through my Gold Grubber. So yeah, we're doing pretty good. And Vanessa gets to add continually a bunch of stats to the board. So all of this is pretty fun, pretty powerful, and will put us in the finals against the mech player. Like I said, it was only a small spoiler. Um, we've got a lot of time that we're just gonna be playing up against the mech player. It's gonna be a pretty lengthy finals, and I'm not sure if there's anything like in particular, we also didn't kill that opponent by the way, uh, but I think the mech player will kill the elementals player this turn. Still just hunting for hoggers. Can we find any? No. And I think here's where I'm gonna start jumping ahead a little bit, especially as we're up against the ghost. Yeah, okay, this turn, nothing happened. But this turn, now we are in the final two. And I still only have one hogger, but I'm still interested in potentially finding some more. So I think first we go through the gamblers. We could try to play some other pirates. I'm going to decide that this gold grubber is honestly just not worth my time. And I do like buying the gamblers first because it can find more gamblers. Then I buy the four. I don't know exactly what I was looking for there, though. Ball of Minions is free. It gives plus five, plus five to something. And... Only, and it doesn't cost me anything, right? Yeah, it's absolutely free. It costs two, and then I get one back, and then I sell it for one. So it's a free plus five, plus five. That's where the hatball things definitely start to come into play. I could cycle through some sixes, try to find some sixes, but here we go. Here's the hoggers. Now we are doing it. So what's a little bit scary is this is the finals, and we are up against a player that just kind of kicked our butt. So I don't want to like just totally disrespect them and play nothing. But at the same time, I mean, look at all these hoggers. We got to go for it. And I'm going to jump ahead here into the next combat. Nothing crazy happens here. It looks like I lock. Oh, I lock the guy that if I lose, he sells for five. That seems really fun and could potentially find me even more hoggers. If I win... That seems great. If I lose, I potentially just die. But last time I lost to this opponent, I just barely lost. They hit me with three tokens. So I could take nine, 
still survive and have five extra gold to show for it or three extra gold, whatever that is, potentially finding some more hoggers or something too. So there's definitely some interesting ideas that we are building. We're still playing with our buddy, which is like good and bad at the same time. I'm, I'm of two worlds in it because it's not that much stats, but it is obviously really good to be able to cycle through all of these shops. Uh, so that is pretty good. My opponent still has a big divine shield character, but we're actually going to snag the wind here. The wind here, just barely. We grab the win as we're able to clean up these microbots. So we will actually deal damage to them. And it's a little bit awkward that we locked the card that hits them for more, but we don't win either, uh, or the card that sells for more rather, uh, but we don't win either. So it's a little bit awkward. Um, and I decide I'm going to sell off Eliza, which doesn't seem that great. She's cool, but I have to sell something if I want to do anything here. And here's where I find a really interesting card, Greta Gold Gun. And again, not sure if this card is still in the game or not, but I get to grab two of them this turn. This gives me the ability to make my hoggers gold. You might have noticed that the thumbnail includes two golden hoggers. Well, I didn't actually find golden hoggers. I just gave them the golden gun. But now when I buy a pirate, well, I find another hogger. But now when I buy a pirate, it gives me five gold. That is absolutely incredible. Probably means that... I'm going to have to sell out of Mill House if I want to make some more room. But you can just see we've got so much cash. We've done so many things this turn, and I still have 10 gold to kick things off. So we'll watch this turn in its entirety. Uh, I think I wind up selling out of Mill House here, potentially a little bit early. But I'm realizing that these other things can add a bunch of stats to my pirates as I just purchase things. So I'm gonna wanna grab them. I pick up another Peggy, that's what it's called. And we're gonna make one more triple here. Uh, then I grab this, then I try to cast the triple reward. I'm almost out of time. Let's just click on something, click on anything. I throw that in, it's not gonna matter. Well, it could have given my gold grabber plus four. Uh, and then I'm out of time with nine gold still left unspent. So there's the APM that I was talking about. Uh, two golden hoggers and another hogger is absolutely insane. Uh, next turn, these hoggers are going to triple so we'll have a little bit more room to play around with adding some additional pirates to my board assuming we make it to the next turn and honestly I did not really even care if I die here I still got to make use of five hoggers five gold buyback on each pirate before hogger went away and that seemed worth it to me uh you know just trying to do some fun things before things go away forever uh, has kind of been my bag recently. Uh, so I was kind of used to that and I figured let's just play a fun one. I don't know if this is right or not. I wound up playing six characters this turn even, uh, which seems less than ideal as well. And looks like we are going to take a little bit of damage for my trouble, though Vanessa pumps herself on these attacks. So we will not take lethal here. We are only going to wind up taking eight down to five. So we still have another turn yet. Yeah, let's see what we can do with now one golden hogger. These hoggers are going to transform back into normal copies and then they will triple, which is probably a little bit weird. Maybe I can find another thing to make use of. I don't know. None of this matters. Let's just pick something up. I, I would like to find another hogger so that we can potentially get a little bit more cash back through these things that we're purchasing. But even so, we're still going to have a lot of gold this turn. I get to pick up another gambler, another captain. All of these things are free. Now, I no longer have my buddy, so I am going to have to spend two gold to roll. I can't just randomly go infinite with all of this stuff. But my pirates at least don't cost me anything and do give me additional stats on the board thanks to Peggy. Uh, so that is still definitely strong. And then we've got these gamblers. I'm going to sell out of them and see if we can find some nice stuff to add to the board to finish off the turn. I'll pick up a South Sea Captain and I will pick up an Eliza. Uh, looks like I'm just gonna sell 
through some other stuff just to add a little bit more stats to the board here. Still have a bunch of cash here actually to potentially buy some stuff and we find a strong arm. So that's gonna be a bunch of stats as long as I can get that in play. I do find another hogger. It's a little bit late finding that towards the end of the turn, but I will be able to sell out of this gold rubber, cycle through a gambler, and then play a strong arm for a bunch more stats to finish off this turn. There is one more gold gun. Uh, so I grab her too. We'll see if she's relevant. Try to sell the strong arm to throw Eliza back in. Just don't have enough time to do it. Let's see. Is this going to be enough? My opponent has got a bunch of divine shields. That divine shield lands on the wrong target though. They really want that to go on their 3-6. Uh, because their 4325 was going to grab those stats regardless. Their 3 6 dies super, super early. So that seems less than ideal for my opponent. They could have ordered that differently, but I think they were just hoping to win the 50 50 and get the Divine Shield on that. Either way, um, I think that we actually have a shot here now. Our Gold Grubber and our Hogger, as well as Vanessa, are all really big. And because my opponent has so many tokens, that means Vanessa has already attacked twice through this board as we just attack into tokens with all of our stuff, which really means my opponent isn't doing all that much. They do have two big Divine Shield characters left, but I don't know if that's quite going to be enough. Vanessa gets the attack and still manages to stay alive. One of my characters is going to trade with their big... Uh, Divine Shield character. Two of my things are going to trade with that, actually, but that still means one of my characters is left, the Golden Hogger, to grab the win and grab first place. I really was not expecting first place with this, but was still super excited about it, and I thought this was a really great send-off for the previous patch. So for this patch, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no luck given. Peace.